After weeks of back and forth, the federal government and the Southwest governors have finally reached an agreement on the Western Nigerian Security Network, also known as Operation Amotekun. And the president, governors and other public office holders might soon need a court order to pursue medical attention in foreign countries. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Thank you for joining us. Now, the controversy on the establishment of the Western Nigerian Security Network, also known as Omotekun, may have come to an end as the federal government and the Southwest governors have reached an agreement on the new security initiative. One of the perceived critics of the initiative, the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, has said he was misquoted. He explains that he did not say that Omotekun was illegal, but it needed to be backed by law. Joining me to discuss this is, um, we start with Dr. Hassan, legal practitioner. Thank you very much for Thank your time. And of course, we have Obi Ajebo, legal practitioner as well. Thank you very much. Okay. A bit confusing. On the one hand, they say he's given uh, a statement uh, saying it is illegal. And then on the other hand, he's saying he was misquoted and just saying that it needs to be uh, backed by law. What message is he trying to convey? Can you uh, just explain a bit? Let's make sense of it. Well, I believe uh, we have to go to the genesis of the Operation Amoteco itself. What does it really stand to, um, to provide? And... Uh, Invariably, we are all aware of the, um, the critical situation we find ourselves in view of the kidnappings, killings, and uh, the husband attack on our expressway, even majorly within the southwestern part of the country. And that, um, that led to the security discourse at a late mid-2019, uh, there was a resolution and for the, the Operation Amotekun to be formed as a community policing strategy on information and intelligence sharing with the existing uh, security apparatus and institutions vis-a-vis the Nigerian police, the DSS and the NSDC and all of you to work closely with the Office of the National Security Advisor. There is a template for this and there were proud discourse with the IG. We are all aware the IG embraced it at first time. There are a lot of discourse that have permit this whole uh, problem-solving idea. Uh, the initiative was cut short with that uh, bombshell from the Office of the Attorney General. It's quite unfortunate that the Attorney General uh, blatantly denied as if uh, he was the one, he was preserved, presumably let it, telling his Nigerians. His original statement, statement is yes, that he was not informed. His, his office was his, not carried out. His original him. statement was clear to state that Amoteku is declared illegal. And that statement culminated to reaction from legal practitioners, opinion molders, uh, from yeah, yeah. At some Everybody point, at some well, point, he was quoted as having. Even I had a guest here yesterday who wasn't updated and said that the um, there's a possibility that the AGF has rescinded his earlier position, but. He went on um, an interview, said one thing, that he did not say it was illegal. And shortly after that, he issued a statement insisting that the mo illegal. there is need for it to be backed by law and that he stands by his original um, uh, position. Isn't this confusing for somebody who doesn't know a lot about the law and is supposed to listen to the Attorney General of the Federation who should know uh, more about what is right and what is wrong? You see, the first thing, the first sentence he said that it was illegal is right. I will explain. But he forgets that the government wants to put in community policing. And when the government said they wanted to put in community policing, I found it very strange that the government in Abuja will come and give me somebody from Medugri or Sokoto to do community policing in my village in Anambra. That defeats the whole essence of community policing. So this Amoteku, what the government will now do is 
employ people from amongst these people that have been recruited as a motorcycle and do their community policing. So the AGF is, is right because there's no place in the constitution which provides for this sort of thing. And that is why we have been calling for um, a, um, an amendment to the constitution because there are certain things that we must have. We must have state police. That, that would be a big leap because th this is why this um, issue has become like a ton. Everybody's talking no, about there it. Was, there is always one angle or the other. There's there was, there was, it, it was, it was, I, I would see the AGF for speaking from two sides of the mouth. Because on the one hand, you have his bar, you have civilian JTF yeah. there. And then now you're now talking about Ometeku, as if um, his bar was set up before they even put any law in place. And that is the same process Ometeku is saying. So he has, to, he has to know that what is good for the goose should be good for the, should be good for the Ganda. Okay, I, I was going to um, go straight to some, um, take excerpt from what he said in the mm. statement, but um, you mentioned something that's pushing me towards the meeting mm. that was announced between the um, uh, vice yeah, president and, and the South East governors. Mm. And what we hear in the news, even though there doesn't seem to be details, mm. is that they've come to an agreement that they should get some sort of legal backing, yeah. you know, uh, for the uh, movement. How would this work? Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, but won't it amount to the regionalization that we're talking about, you know, creating state, um, you know, a backdoor way of creating the state police. Because if well, you were looking to legalize a situation that you say is, you said it's community policing, now yeah. you're saying that we need to legalize it. I you mean, know, explain. You know, basically, sorry, we have a, we have a template in Lagos State, that is the Lagos State Neighborhood uh, Security Corps, which is a semblance of community policing, whereby we have um, guys that uh, were um, uh, recruited to serve as aid to the to the existing police that we have, and it's really working. But it might not have really garnered that that uh, attention as we expect, because what Amateku is coming up with is a different approach to it. Let's be very clear and clear with it. Amateku is coming from the hills of yes. Let us employ our traditional methodology in solving this problem. We no, have I'm, the I'm actually, I'm actually, we because the we've really talked about this issue, so I'm sure our viewers have heard a lot about, Definitely. you know, how it was, but, uh, come, but, but, how it came about. What, what, what I'm trying to get law, for us yeah. tonight is um, him, uh, the, the, the outcome of the meeting saying that there is an agreement that they need to legalize it. So yeah. I'm asking, you know, like, is this not a way of bringing you, you it? You know, like yesterday we issued a statement. I'm the president of Yoruba Council of Utah also. And uh, we issued a statement advising the AG that we shouldn't make a, make a mistake of um, solving one regional problem at the expense of the other. Okay. This is a golden opportunity to nationalize all that needs to be talked about in relation to vigilante and mm -hmm. other structure of uh, security personnel that we all in our various community believe or have trust in. If vis a vis OPC, Onta, Agbekoya, whatever, that you still believe that, yeah, these are the guys that, has the, that have the, the, the capacity to provide such solutions. So that is where we now provided that opinion that there be, let there be a national joint regional security network. Amoteku is just like a template, just like a, 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 a president that we can use to to lay that foundation. I, I, I read a bill today on the on Vigilante uh, Council of Nigeria, something that will bring about a, a, a national view in, 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 in an enabling law. Because if you have to go to every state, you know, designing their own kind of legislation, without having that national law, that will ought to now be domesticated at the various stages, just like we have the Child Right Act. So these are, uh, because if it is to be domesticated, the names will differ from one region to the other based on the nomenclature that best suits mm. their own arrangement. So the best the AG need not push it back to the governor to go to their state to, to take that power. Since we are talking about defense, they need to put it in alliance with the Nigerian police force. A department, we already have the community policing, uh, the, 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 the community and police relations uh, uh, committee, PCRC. But the PCRC is a different approach. It's just for, for information sharing amongst community 
uh, stakeholders. It's different from when you are now participating in that secure, in securing that community. And that requires some energy of people going, uh, you know, you know, playing some frontal roles, just like what we used to have when the, we have the Moemi Edgar uh, CP Lagos, and they had the issue of the Bado in the Korodi Axis. The OPC led that operation to pick those boys. Then the police follow suit and arrest and prosecute at the same time. That is what we are talking about. It's not a confrontation against the government. The government just needs to apply some subtle measures in ensuring that it doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't get out of hand. They, they create an emergency code of conduct, a code of operation. If there is an emergency code of operation, vis-a-vis, -vis, maybe probably before the law is even enacted, is a situation of necessity. All right, um, I, I, I will come back to you because uh, the more you speak, the more questions Thank seem you. to be coming <laughs> up. But I want to get your reaction to what he said and, you know, the these um, legalizing it, going to, um, to the Houses of Assembly and enacting laws, um, regionalization, restructuring. Some people are saying this is like you know, a way to get it in. Um, if, you, if, if I can take you people back towards 2003 or to 1999, when Badunuju was governor in Anambra State, and Anambra was the wild, wild west, um, criminals were getting out of hand. He now set up the Bakasi boys. If you remember the Bakasi yeah. boys, he went to the House of Assembly and passed the law to bring in the Bakasi boys, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. This enactment, for it to have continuity, must, have an, must be backed by an act. But you see, the AGF should realize that things are changing in Nigeria. So they should, fa they should, act, uh, they should enact a law that will bear into this part that whatever it is, community policing, state policing, or whatever has come to stay. Because of the inability or, in, or, or in capa capacity, capacity of, the, of the federal government, the police, to, to rein in these kidnappers and these um, headsmen or, or whoever they are. So this has come to stay. So they must put an enabling law in place for it. Okay, I'll, I'll still come, but there's one question that's begging for answer, but I want to capture as much of the issues uh, tonight that we're focusing on. Um, there was a statement by the Ono State Governor, and uh, he's saying that after the meeting with the Vice President, that you're going to be meeting with the President again to impress on him the urgency um, for such, the, uh, such an uh, operation mm -hmm. uh, that they've set up. My question is, they just had a meeting with the vice president. Why is it necessary for them to go meet with the president again on the same issue? Yeah, what does yeah, that yeah, say? Yeah, there, was, there, was a, there was a conflict. It was like a, an how big uh, um, so, solution uh, trust that is looking at the outcome. There are a lot of conflict. The, 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 the meeting itself it doesn't have that coherence in terms of what is the actual resolution? Is Amoteko still legal or illegal? At the moment, Amoteko is an inchoate um, arrangement. Now, the governor are no, uh, uh, finding it very hard to say, okay, let's go and work with the federal government community policing. The federal government itself has not even created a template for community policing. And they now said, okay, the plan. There is no plan mm -hmm. in the open. The vacuum. So now it's like nothing to really stand on. That community policing that they say that you should go and work with the IG now, it's not in, it's not in existential. So where are, not they, are, 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 are they going to work on? So what we are looking at is that, pre preferably, I will blame the Southwest governors at one hand. In considering something of this magnitude, you don't just go on the fury of, let's just launch the vehicle without going through the required necessity of you going to your state houses of assembly. If they had done the needful, they would have been a, a, a little above but I, as, as at now, yeah, by going yeah. through their state houses of assembly. You, you, you are answering some pertinent yes. questions, but sorry. my question is, the president, they want to meet the president after meeting the vice president. Is there a break in communication between the offices of the two most important citizens in this country? I mean, if you meet the vice president, most people will assume you have, you've already gotten the ear of the president. So why is that meeting with the president necessary when they've had a meeting with the vice president? Let me bring the, the question the to you. The vice president is from the southwest. 
These are Southwest governors. Mm? Mm -hmm. Let it not be that because he's a Southwest, he's from the Southwest, that is why they agreed. Let it go to the president, who is from another tribe, and then let everything be. Let everything be. Well, the vice president is not the vice president of the Southwest. Yeah, well, let me put it in the correct <laughs> that, because one thing is that the, the power of commander in chief of armed forces is greater. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you can't share it with, with yeah. anybody. That's, and this is that's, security. And we are talking about your security. Defense. The only person that the only person that has that authority is not even the IG. It's the national security advisor. The president needs to consult in detail with the national security advisor, who will in turn call all the service chiefs. It's not a, a, a presumably one end of the IG because in the northeast. Is the military that are sharing guns and, um, and every other defense there, um, artillery with the civilian JTF, which is not even conventional police now. So they need a, the hand of Mr. President. And that's why we are equally calling on Mr. President. If we are an executive bill, this is a situation of necessity. They need to really sit and don't politicize the whole issue. So that the confidence of the people, that the people are expecting, at the moment, we are losing guard as, as, as citizens because we, our fears are enlarged by the fact that you can't travel from one region to the other. To the other. Benin Expressway is, is totally a risk. Even the entire Southwest, we are still talking about, even with the Furia of Amateku, we are still living in fears. So what Mr. President needs to do is to look at the vantage position, the plus of this whole arrangement that the people are offering themselves. It needs to seize the opportunity. In a sane society, you need to really take the advantage that, oh, people are offering themselves. Oh, this is the redeeming modus operandi. This is how you get involved. If you have this and that, this is our best. It's not even the way we now, the way it's going to go back is that each governor should employ their Moteco and regiment. It's going to be, be having a crisis situation. Oh, okay. In managing uh, so sorry, at the end of the day. Can I say something? Okay. Um, he was blaming the governors for acting first before setting the legislation. I understand what the governors did. They brought this out to the forefront. If they were talking, it could die down. But now this has become a topical issue. They have spent money. They have shown their people that they are desirous of, of, of changing the situation. So everybody is now under pressure to resolve this issue. And this issue will be resolved soonest because it's, it's become a political issue, it's become a topical issue, and it must be resolved soonest. So whatever has to be done, has to be done soonest. Uh, well, okay, uh, I'm, uh, time flies when you have so much to talk about, but I must ask this. The governor, that's the understate governor, said something. He insisted this morning, actually, uh, that the insinuations born out of ignorance about Amoteku is... Uh, as a regional militia is not true. Uh, his words that I want us to look at is, he says it is a child, the operation is a child oh, of necessity, necessity. necessity. Yeah. Uh, to help the security agencies uh, perform better. But now considering the controversy that it is generating, are there other options that could be considered um, aside Amotekun yeah. at this point? The best of option is for us to equip our, our security bodies, uh, Nigerian police, with full funding. Our policing is weakened. So, the fact that there is no accurate progression in the existing, existing security institution, even the Nigerian army. So you need to be brief yes, so she can There needs to be a, a, lot of, a, a lot of funding and technical support. And at the same time, the community policing should also be engineered towards this. In every country in the world, there is no one police to take care of a federation because there are units and there are cells. So there will be regional police, there will be state police, there will be even village police. Definitely. That's how it should be done. So we are having a police force of about 400, 500,000 to take care of the needs of over 100 million. How is that possible? You know, so it, it just doesn't work. We have to realize that times are changing and there's a population explosion. So we have to start amending our way of thinking and stop thinking clannish and think federation. All right. Thank you very much Thank for you. sharing your thoughts on the program. Thank you very much.
We'll go on a short break and when we return, the new bill that will require public officers to get a court order before getting medical treatment from foreign countries is up for discussion next. Stay with us.